Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hello, my name is Ben Thomas and you're watching Combat Sports UK. Today, I'm joined by Bellator's fifth-ranked featherweight, Jeremy Kennedy, who collides with Pedro Carvalho at Bellator 291. First of all, it's an absolute pleasure to speak with you again. How are you doing today? How's life treating you at the moment? I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's good. You know, I'm three and a half weeks out, so like camp's in full swing. You know, the diet's on point. You know, the, the food's, you know... Carbs are low, energy is a little low, but then, you know, you get into the gym and you get warmed up and you get fired up and you remember why you're doing this and how close it is. You know, I'm in that shooting range. So I'm um, just pushing through the last little couple of weeks of camp here. And then I head out uh, two weeks, two weeks now, actually, I'm going out a little early. So I leave two weeks and uh, I can't wait to get on that plane, man, and get this thing going. And well, are you heading out early to experience a bit of the Dublin culture or... Are you just going out to... Uh, just a little boat, a bit of boat. Like, not necessarily experience. I'm going to stay a little bit after as well. Um, but I just want to get with... It's been a while since I fought, you know, overseas with the travel. And the weight cuts, everything's always got to be so dialed in for me. Um, not the smallest featherweight. So, uh, I just want to get out there, get comfortable. I'm bringing me and my team. we got an Airbnb out there, you know, so I can be situated, get be water loading, dieting training out there you know the time changes a little bit i want to get my sleep schedule on point um i don't want to just fly out there and, and land and it be fight week you know and then i'm worried about my weight cut so just give myself an extra four or five days and uh that'll be the difference maker i think i mean you just said there you're staying a few days after the fight are you going out in the town in dublin getting on the <laughs> Win or lose, you're on the booze. Is that the case? Yeah, I think you, uh, you, you can't not. You know, you go out there, it's uh, going to have to have a couple of Guinness, you know, some Jameson, you know, we'll, we'll experience it all. Yes. But I got a job to do first. So uh, that's why I gave myself a little bit. Of, I don't want to be thinking about any of that prior, you know. So it's going to be fight focused, dialed in, get the job done. And then uh, me and the wife, you know, travel around a little bit and, and experience it out there there we are it'll all be worth it after it but like we just said we're just three weeks out from the fight night now how's the body feeling you all nice healthy ready to just get back in there yeah you know these last two camps i've really invested in my body you know like rehab i'm multiple times a week different massage therapists physiotherapists hyperbaric chamber um hot cold plunging like i've just been as much as i'm training i'm i'm recovering now as well you know, I'm a little bit older now. You can't, you know, you can't just run to the wheels fall off, you know, 12 sessions a day and then wake up and like nothing's wrong. You know, you know, you're always waking up and sore and tired. So the recovery and the rehab just allows me to still train every day at, at top notch, you know, and then and it and it works like a compound. You know, I've since my last fight, I've just been building off of it and uh, healthy, free, injury free, you know, and um, just best shape. I could I could be in you know so I'm just I'm excited like I said the last camp everybody says it best shape I'm in you know and the last camp it was and I just didn't let that go I just continued to build off of it you know I went out to Thailand continued training continued eating good came home and I we found out about the fight you know shortly after the last you know so there wasn't much downtime where I didn't have a fight you know even though if it was seven weeks 17 weeks away I still knew I had Pedro in my mind you know and I had this date and everything so I I've been locked in not necessarily in camp but camp mindset you know for the for a, for a long time now and the last time we spoke you were just one week out from taking on Aaron Pico at Bellator 286 yes. obviously it didn't exactly end how you would have wanted with about being waved off at the end of the first round but up until yeah. that point you were utterly dominant I mean what positives can you take out that performance given how it kind of ended in a not as positive manner as you may have wanted to yeah i mean like the ending's unfortunate and you never you never want to see somebody like especially a guy like like aaron you know he's a hard-working kid got a bright future to end like that and then them, them all cranking on his arm and who knew what the extent was you know thankfully it wasn't too bad and i think he's all good to go now and surgery and and is all good but at the time i was just you know it, that sucks you never i would hate that to have for it to have been me i guess i like put myself in his shoes I know he trains hard and, and for it to end that way, it's like just unfortunate, you know, 
for me, I, I wish I got the the finish in that round. You know, similar to to you saw Aljo and 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 TJ shortly after that. You know, and very similar shoulder. It like these things happen. You know, so just taking care of your body, and that just reiterated to me after the fight that I'm like, you know, I think my body would held up all that hard rigorous training camp because of how much I invested into it. So I got to keep doing that and keep up. And that's why I just, I've changed my mindset of just preserving my body. And like, this is what we, we use our bodies to fight and earn and we're nothing without them. So I just got to a hundred percent treat my body. Right. And as for the fight, yeah, as soon as I got my hands on him, I, I felt really good. You know, I, you build it up in your head about, you know, his pedigree and, his credentials and whatnot and then you never really know until you feel the feel your opponent you know same with pedro right now and going through my head and um once i got in there i felt really good really comfortable it was another hostile cut crowd you know his hometown again what i'm going to be doing and uh i fed off it you know i like that energy you know I, I embraced the booze it's all just noise at that point anyways you know um felt really good in there and and it just gave me the more confidence knowing that I've been fighting these top guys since I, I signed with Bellator. You know, I think it's been three or four top five guys in a row with Borix, Sanchez, Pico. I think they were all, yeah, it was like ranked one, three, four, whatever. And I was hovering around like the seven, eight, eight mark every time I fought those guys. And so there's always a little bit of doubt, like, oh man, I'm jumping up five, five spots fighting these guys. And I felt that at home every single time, you know, as soon as I got in there with Sanchez, same thing. Borix, I would love to run that one back because I, I kind of got lost in the moment on that one. And um, so just being there, getting the win, having the fight go the way it was and just feeling him in there. I just I know I'm, I'm a bigger, stronger featherweight than a lot of these guys. And uh, my experience is caught up to my mindset and physicality and everything's come together now. You know, I've been fighting in the top of top of the organizations for about six years now. Um, and. 10 fights and and here i am you know so i'm i'm it, it's kind of coming to this point where i'm that, that title so close you know and i've just got one more one more guy to go through one more step you know and uh it's been a couple of years in the making of climbing fighting these top guys to try to earn my spot earn my spot up these ranks and uh now we're at five versus three and there's nobody else really in between so i just i get through this guy and, and this is the fight i've been wanting for a long time you know we've had a lot of back and forth so um yeah we're here now we're can't wait man we'll get on to the fight in a moment but before yeah. the fight against aaron pico uh better 286 i believe you were ranked <laughs> two or three places yeah. below him, and now even after the win you're placed one below him still do yep. you believe that's slightly unfair due to the domination or is it kind of justified because of the manner of the ending how do you feel about the rankings at the moment? I mean, I've I've been on these on these rankings too. You know, I I, I fought Sanchez. Um, I was seven or eight, and he was. I think I was eight, and he was um, fourth. And then when the new rankings came out, he was fifth, and I was sixth. Like he was still ranked ahead of me, and that was as clear cut of a thirty twenty seven as you can get. Um, so I don't know what it is what these guys have on me. I I even brought it up post fight. And then the same thing happened after the the Pico one. That one wasn't as much uh, much of a shock to me, just because of how the ending and you know Pico's been a fan favorite and um, really high regarded and well respected. So I, I can I can see it, and I'm not I wasn't really bummed about it. I already had my next fight lined up, and it was another guy up higher, ranked third. So I was like, it was just a number to me, you know. And I'm still I'm I'm looking at this fight as the number one contender fight. So. I'm going to beat Pedro and he'll be ranked two and I'll be ranked three and I'll still be right for the title. And uh, it's all good. Yeah. I love that. I, I love that the rankings make absolutely zero sense at the moment, but what can yeah. you I mean, no, what can you do? It's just a number. Unless you got the title, you know, that it's just a, a hunt is a popularity contest until you can get that belt, you know? And so I'm just, if you want to keep feeding me, these guys ranked way higher than me, let's do it. And, and we, we are, we we're here again. So, Take, keep everyone taking them out. Knows, everyone knows the true rankings. Everyone knows you're higher anyway. But is there yeah. a kind of reason why the rematch between yourself and Aaron Pico isn't taking place? Because I believe after the fight, you were kind of both <laughs> interested in the rematch. But is it because maybe he went off and had a surgery? You had another opponent in mind? What was the reason yeah. why the rematch coming off? 
I think, yeah, timeline was the biggest thing with, with that is who knows, nobody knew where he was at with his recovery or what the extent of it was. And I was fresh. I had one round um, that I, I didn't take any damage or anything. So I was, I'm, I was ready to go right away. So um, I wanted to keep moving forward and I didn't want to wait around. And, and that, that fight wouldn't really propel me the way this one does now. So I, it put me in a better position and who knows down the line, what's going to happen, you know? And so for me, I was just looking at focusing on me and what's the best, route to the title for me so after that fight it was pedro and because i had a date in mind it was it made sense that in the division it made sense timeline wise with pedro fighting mads a few weeks prior so we were both ready to fight again so it's just a matter of getting pen to paper and and getting that book so that's what that was all on my mind you know again didn't know surgery any of that and boric same thing like they i think he blew out his knee so the, the the featherweight division was just a few guys were injured and Mads had a loss and AJ went up and so the only guy that was really on my 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 radar was was Pedro. But you are now back. You're back fighting at Bellator 291 in Dublin, yep. Ireland. And the, we literally just mentioned this before we started recording. But the last time we spoke was just before the Aaron Pico fight, and you claimed completely out of the blue that you would love to fight in Dublin in front yeah. of the British crowds. And now four months later. You're fighting in Dublin. How excited are. are you to experience that atmosphere? Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's another you know, it's another add to the to the experience when it's all said and done. Another another notch in the resume. Um, to go out and experience this U- European crowd, like the the Ireland crowd. Every time I've seen seen their pre- previous shows, you know, when we're watching them here on the TV, I'm like, man, I would love to be out there and, and experience that. You know, Patchy, another one of my teammates who fought. Uh, Gallagher in the co-main event a few few shows back said the same thing he's like man you're gonna have fun out there it's a very very cool you know and, and he even experienced the Japanese crowd which is another one that's on my list and he said the the Irish crowd topped it like it, it was the best thing ever so I'm very excited for it you know it's just another yeah just another experience and so I just I can't wait you know and uh to be able to do it while earning my title shot against an opponent I've wanted to fight against, you know, a high rank guy, it just, it's all coming together and it's more motivation to train, you know, train my butt off. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a dream scenario, but let's now get into your opponent a bit more. You are taking on Pedro Carvalho, who's ranked at number three in featherweight rankings. Like I said, don't really care about the rankings anyway, so yeah. shift him away. But what are you expecting him to bring come fight night and how do you expect your stars to kind of match up? Yeah, he, he's a tough one to figure out because he's, uh, like he's good everywhere but you don't really have this one spot where it's like oh that's that's what you got to worry about you know and but he he manages to to win these rounds and steal rounds late you know like even if the the fight's not going his way he deals with adversity really well um against Wycho and Mads you know he was down on those in the early in the rounds and he came back to to rally and win these rounds to eventually win the fight um and he comes in shape, so you have to be ready for that. And that's also part of his rallying. You know, you can't let him get on and you can't fade. You know, you got to stay there. And that's something I, I I pride myself on is my conditioning. You know, I, that's what I, I focus on a lot in the Pico camp because I know he's a guy that comes in in really good shape. And again, I've just continued on since then. So I'm not too worried about the, the gas tank. I'll, I'll be able to match gas tank for gas tank out there. Um but I think the biggest gap is going to be in the wrestling and the grappling. You know, I don't think he's felt quite, I, I don't think a lot of these featherweights have felt a guy like me on top, you know, and uh, I've been saying it for a long time from the UFC to the PFL to, to now Bellator that uh, I think any featherweight in the world is going to have trouble with me if, if I get a hold of him. And he's shown some, you know, he's been susceptible to, to grappling dominance, you know, and, uh, Again, he's just he's tricky though. He's good at getting back up. He's good at fighting. And he's wiry and he's resilient right to the very end. So I just can't let him have any inch. I'm just going to be super stubborn and dominate from the first bell to the last. You know, every second of that fight, I'm not going to give him an inch. And um, that's the way to to stifle him. You know, and don't not letting him play fancy on the feet and switch stance and throw his kicks and in and out and whatever and just shut all that shit down. I mean, it's quite well documented that he's Portuguese and Irish. He's fought yeah. in Dublin on countless occasions and will have one hell of a crowd behind him. And you did mention earlier that you kind of feed off the booze. 
But what sort of reception are you expecting from the Irish fans? And do you think that will maybe give him an added motivation and kind of elevate his performance on the night? Yeah, I think... I mean, I, I think I'll probably get the booze, of course. I, I always do when I'm fighting these hometown guys. And he is Portuguese, but he's well represented in our, Ireland and he's fighting S- out of SPG. So, you know, he'll be he'll be the hometown guy. And I don't even think Portugal is very far from Ireland for a lot of his hometown family, I'm sure, is going to be out there. Um, but I, I feed off that. Like I said, it's just noise. You know, it's not going to be worse than me fighting Honey Jason in Brazil, you know, in Fortaleza. That was his hometown and they're chanting uvo mojea at me and yelling at me and 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 it was all good i was just a young kid at that time now it's just a it's a it's a job to me i'm going to get i'm going to earn my title shot i don't care what they're they're booing or cheering and whatever it's just noise and it, at the end of the day it's going to be me and him in the cage and i'm sure he'll feed off of it like he he does in his prior friends he'll be feeling himself but it, you know once he gets corked in the face once he'll be like oh shit okay the crowd doesn't mean anything at this point yeah, exactly. Once you punch in the face, that noise disappears straight away. But... Real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you focus on one guy now and not the crowd. Exactly. Like we mentioned <laughs> earlier, and we did discuss it a tiny bit, but I want to touch upon it a bit more. He occupies the third spot at Featherweight. So this is kind of a huge fight for the entire division. Do you mm-hmm. see this solely as a title and eliminator? Do you believe the winner of this fight will get a shot at Patrizio? Yeah, definitely. I mean, where else? You got five versus three. The only two guys coming off of wins in the top five. I mean, excluding AJ, but he's pretty well. I think he, once these rankings come out again, he'll be he'll be out. I'm, I think he's been out of featherweight long enough and established as a lightweight. And he's entering that Grand Prix where he's going to be tied up anyways. So I don't see anybody else. You know, we, we've spoke about Borks with his knee injury and, and he had just fought Pitbull. So... Mads still has some work to do. Pico's got a rebound. There's still a lot of work to be done in the rest of the division. So I think it's this is the clear-cut number one contender fight. Pitbull's a guy who likes to stay busy. So keeping a, a challenger ready for him is, is good to go. And, you know, outside of him going down to 35, I don't see what other option there is outside of, of the winner of Pedro and I. Um, and even down down at 35, they still got a lot of work to do there. Patchy and Stotts have got to fight. You got Sergio coming back, probably unify that. Like, there, there's time. And if he just fought in December, he's going to want to fight again, you know, relatively soon. Timeline will work out summer, early, late summer, whatever. And uh, I, but again, looking at the featherweights, this is the two top guys that are on the win- coming off of wins. And, uh, after after that, after February 25th, we're going to have a clear-cut contender. I honestly, I, I can't wait for this fight, honestly. In Dublin, yes, two of the top guys who are about to go for a belt, it's, it's going to be <laughs> I genuinely can't wait. Bellator are yes, just sir. flying these events out at the moment that are just out of the park. But yeah, you, you've come into this fight and you've been training at Extreme Couture for quite some time now, who have had an incredible 2022 and have <clears> slowed down <throat> to the start of 2023. Already so far, you've had big wins from Strickland, Danny Ige, Cody Stammen. How much confidence does that give you as a team and as a fighter going into a fight in a few weeks' time? Yeah, it's just more confidence. That's just we're doing the right things day in, day out. You know, nothing's really changed. You know, the some guys lose sometimes and we're on a losing streak, but nothing changes, nothing deters us. And it just shows when we rebound with, you know, three, four, five back-to-back wins across different weight classes that we're all doing the right thing and it just keep keep doing what we're doing have any of them given you any words of advice heading into Bellator 291 or is that to come in the coming weeks maybe have you had some words with Sean Strickland does he give you any motivation <laughs> no no I just more more so just getting my job done you know and going in clocking in getting the work done in the gym pushing me in the gym that's the best way they can you know get me prepared and uh, give me hard rounds, give me good work, and uh, just go get my job done. It's my turn. Does it give you an added personal motivation to just keep that train rolling? Because obviously, yeah. this now you've got a good start 2023. It's expected to just keep carrying on, isn't it? And do you expect that to happen? Obviously, you do. But yeah. do you expect this to add more motivation? Yeah, like I, I, I wanna, I wanna keep rallying with the team. You know, I want, I wanna be in that winner's circle, and uh, I gotta get my job done and get my work done prior, leading up to it. Make sure I'm fully prepared, and yeah, I'm just excited for it, and I wanna be, 
that next win. And then again, there's going to be guys coming up after me and they're, I'm, I'm always expecting my team to win, you know, so we do the right things in the gym and we've, we figured this thing out and uh, prepare properly and that's it. And now finally, for those out there who maybe haven't seen you fight before and are maybe attending Bellator in Dublin or maybe watching from the comfort of their own sofa at home, what can they expect when you step into the cage at Bellator 291 in a few weeks' time? Oh, man, just violence. I'm trying to finish this guy. I'm trying to put him away. I need to make a statement. You know, I need to earn that title shot and cap this off by by putting him away. So expect of, I'm, I'm going to be hunted for the finish. Well, there we are. What more do you need? What more of a sales point do you need to go and watch Jeremy Kennedy do his thing at Bellator 291? I mean, you've just summed it up perfectly. But honestly, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you again. Taking time out of your busy schedule as well, even when you're a few weeks away from fight. Like, we appreciate it so much, Hansi. Thank you so All much. Right. For us. Of course. And on behalf of Combat Sports UK, we do wish you all the best of luck. So good luck. Appreciate and we can't wait to watch you.